Okay, my good father is a percussionist. Um, a percussionist born in the United States. Both parents, Madame Faye, Malik So, they're from Senegal, West Africa. And I'm a percussionist born in a family of percussionists, dancers, singers. And my father's a percussionist, my mother's a dancer. So my father is a percussionist that's known worldwide that performs a lot of different places. When I was two, when I was two years old, I started playing percussion with my father. My family, especially my father. My good father, a lot of people, uh, the person they named me after, his name is my good father. And he was a big, 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 big talking drummer. And people know him very, very well. He's the family of Asan Cham. So if you know, my good, if you know Asan Cham, you know my good father. Well, my career is I've been basically performing a lot with my dad. That's how I started off, performing with the family group, because my dad has a group called Futa Toro, and was also known as Musike Basane, with Malang Bayo, Maliso, a lot of different people all over the world. So I started a career with doing that, and later and later, I started having my own stuff, and now I've been playing percussion for Angeli Kijo for almost 10 years now. Have you collaborated with Senegalese artists? A lot, a lot. I have a lot of friends here, <laughs> friends and family, so I collaborated with them a lot. When did you start your Generation Perku group? Well, the group is a family group, and my cousins and friends, we all started it here. So it's been, I would say, about maybe six years now since we had the group, and it's been going. So they've been having it here, it's in London and the United States. How did you start alongside Angelique Kijo? Well, with Angelique Kijo, I first met her at the Academy Awards. Uh, I was playing with my dad and we was actually playing for Kurt Franklin. And we opened and then she played the second part and that's when Andre Manga, her old bass player, introduced me to Angelique Kijo. And then later on, I got a call for our audition to do it, and when I did the audition, I made it. With the Black Panther movie, it's a huge movie. So when I walked into it, uh, I didn't know it was for it. So when I saw it, I was like, wow, this is for a huge movie. So I made sure I put a lot of effort and energy into it. How did you work on the film with the composer Ludwig Göransson? We sat down and he explained what he wanted and I also added my information and my music and my mind to it. And it was just a good conversation between me and him and we locked it down very well. Did you see the scenes and imagine the sounds then? What was the creative process? Yeah, I saw some of the sound and basically what I did is when I saw some images, I automatically knew what the images needed. So I just followed the inspiration of what they were doing and that's how I did the music for it. What were your inspirations for this movie's music? By basically following the scenes. Every movement they made, I knew what to play because every, every dance step, every shout that they had to say or anything they had to make a point of, I knew exactly what to put there. Have you been surprised at the success of Black Panther? Actually, I wasn't surprised because after looking at the movie and listening to the music and just vibing at the studio, it was, I knew it was gonna be a hit. The film had a lot of resonance, especially for the black community in the United States or Europe or even here in Africa. 
giving a lot of pride to people. How do you explain it? Basically, yeah, I can see that happening because it's a black movie. So at this time of right now in life, a lot of things is kind of heavy on us. So with that movie coming out, it, it, it gave a lot of positive energy and a lot of strong inspiration to all the black people. So I believe that everybody's happy for those reasons. I want to express that music is not only in one place. Yes, I'm Senegalese by my mom and dad, but I want people to understand that music is from everywhere. So I'm not only going to do Senegalese music, American, salsa, every, any kind of music that I know and I love, I'm going to put it all in one and show how much everything comes from Africa. And I want people to see a different color in music because I don't want to do something that everybody is doing. So my point is to come with my own flavor so people can see something different. What are your future projects? I'm actually here right now on a project with my brother, Weedy Brimo, and we're working on a project now. And with other projects, we're gonna work on more albums, you know, working on playing more movies and et cetera. I have a lot of stuff coming up and you guys will be informed more and more and more. Do you have any collaborations inside with Senegalese artists? Yes, I have a lot. Um, my papa used to do it. We always, you know, meet at airports. We always perform. We always perform before him or after him. Baba Mal, um, BJ Faye, a lot of heavy hitters here in Senegal that are my dads, my uncles, really good friends. I have a lot of collaborations with a lot of people here. Do you have Senegalese or international artists with whom you would like to play? That I would like to play with? Yes. Well, the person that I really, 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 really want to do something with, may his soul rest in peace, is Dujnjai Rose. I really wanted to do something with him, may his whole soul rest in peace. Because why I really want to do something with him is because he took... Senegal to another level. If you go to the United States or Europe and you say Senegal, what you would hear, you should do Dunja Rose, Baba Mal, Ismail Allah. So those are legends. And they really mean a lot for Senegal. So that's a person that I really, really, really want to do something with. Yes, I come here every year. But uh, I haven't been here for two years because I was working on many different projects. But yeah, usually I come here every year. Do you have family in Senegal? Yes, I have. All my family's here. So yeah, my mom and my dad, they're in the United States with me and my sister and my nephews. But everybody else is here. Did you often come to Senegal when you were young? Yes, I did. Uh, I used to come here a lot when I was young. So like I said, every year I would come. When you are in Senegal, what are you missing the most from the United States? <laughs> well, United States, we got a lot of good things there. But when I'm home, I actually don't really think about the States because knowing I'm going to go right back there. <laughs> so when I come here, because when usually I come, I come for a month or two. So I really have fun here, you know. And it's good to come here and stop thinking about bills and everything that we got to do in the United States, you know. So when we come here, we come here for a vacation and we don't think about anywhere else. When you are in the United States, what are you missing the most from Senegal? Now we're talking. Um, the children running around outside, the music, you always hear music 24-7. When you sit in, you could even sit in front of your house and just you know, with my family that I'm here with, you could just sit in front of your house and bring out the drums. But in the United States, if you do that, 911 will be outside in front of your house. ASAP. <laughs>
to tell people the peace, the love, the enjoyment, and the positivity. Because in Senegal, is, is I'm say Africa, period. Everything is just peace, and the people are just, you could just stand there, everybody's saying, hello, how you doing? People talk to you, how, even if they don't know you. They want to get to know you. They're interested. They, they, they really love to know what you're about and what you're here to do. So that's something that I would definitely want to do, because some people are really into that. And I believe everybody should be. And when you come to Senegal, you will get that. I really like going to Gory Island uh, just to visit, you know, and see what happened with our great grandparents, how they came through. I really love to go watch that because anytime I go there, it gives me more courage and more power to know what we're here to do and what we have to do in life to make our parents and our grandparents and our children and their children to be more powerful and succeed in life. Senegalese dish. Um, I love Supukanja. <laughs> Supukanja and paella is everything to me. Like I said, Baba Dunja Ros. Salute to him. He's my idol. Yusundur is my idol. BJ Faye is my idol. I have plenty, 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 plenty of huge heavy hitters that I really respect. Because what I respect about them is they are actually not only working for Senegal. You know, you can be an artist and only work for where you live, but they actually, you know, expanding, going far, 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 far away. So those people are really inspiring everybody else to even know what a sabar drum is, what, you know, what Senegalese culture. So somebody like Dunjai Rose, anywhere you go, you will see him. In New York, I'm sure they have plenty of paintings of him in walls, and they know who Dunja Rose is. Japan, anywhere you go, all over the world, you say Dunja Rose, they know him. Same thing we used to do. <laughs>